Raider Nation, if you're wondering, will Josh Jacobs or Devontae Adams be traded? Don't worry, I'll tell you. And if you're also wondering, hey, Mitch, how can I gain an extra 2.8 inches? I got you covered. Shout out to Gonzuri for sponsoring today's show. They offer you height-boosting shoes, which you can get if you look down in the comments and in the description of today's show. Huge shout out to Gonzuri for sponsoring. Coming up here on the Raiders Report, the seven Raiders that are the most likely to be traded before the regular season, and we're going to be breaking all of those players down. Now, the first name that I got to bring up, it's Josh Jacobs, and is he a trade candidate? Yes, unfortunately, he is. He has yet to sign the franchise tag that he has stated he is not going to sign. He led the NFL last season with over 2,053 total yards, and right now he's got a cap hit if he ends up signing that tag at $10.1 million. If the Raiders were to trade him, they would save that entire contract and they would eat no money. Now, the reason why we're talking about Jacobs here first is because he's the headliner, right? He's the name. He's the reason I am even making this show because the amount of people that have asked me, is Jacobs going to be dealt? Is he going to be traded? I don't have the answer to that, but I do know this. His camp does not want to play on the tag. His camp believes that he deserves a long-term contract. He is not going to get a long-term contract because that deadline has already passed on July 17th. So if Jacobs wants to play for the Raiders, he's got two options. Either him and his agent, who I'm telling you all right now, Jacobs should pick up the phone and fire his agent, need to figure out a deal of one-year contract with the Raiders, or he's going to end up playing on the franchise tag. The Raiders also need to have a grown-up conversation with Jacobs and say, you got two options. Either you're going to play for us this season and you're going to sign the franchise tag, or we're going to act like adults here and get a legitimate contract down, or we're going to trade you away because I don't want to be waiting around doing this high school cryptic bullshit tweet and stuff because I am absolutely sick of it, right? So if the Raiders were to move on from Jacobs, I would say right now, if a team would be willing to offer a second-round pick in the 2024 draft, the Raiders might actually do it, which sucks because it's not nearly enough value. And the running back market right now is a really difficult market to be able to figure out. When I was live earlier on the Raiders report, I said that the running back market and the housing market, it's the exact same freaking thing right now. I want to be able to get a house at 2%, 3%, 4%, like it was back in three years ago. But unfortunately, i got to pay 7% because that's the way that it is. And Jacobs and his team need to realize that the running back market and the housing market are the exact same thing right now. Is it unfortunate? Yes. But guess what? Sometimes life throws you curveballs. And instead of just being a big old crybaby on social media, sometimes you got to handle those curveballs. So vote right now down in the comment section. And you know what? I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. Will the Raiders trade Josh Jacobs? I want you to type T for trade, or I want you to type K for keep. You're about to get hit with the YouTube bad breaks. While that ad is playing, scroll on down and let me know. Let's go to the next Raiders trade candidate here on today's show. It's Malcolm Koontz, and he was selected in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft. Last season, in the very first year with McDaniels, he played in 6% of the snaps on defense, and he played in 50% of the snaps on special teams. If the Raiders do trade him, they would save $1.11 million and they would only eat two hundred and forty-nine dollars I will say with a lot of the trade candidates that you're going to see here on the show, they might not get traded. And some of them are probably going to end up getting cut. But the reason why he's on this show is because the Raiders went out recently and signed Isaac Rochelle. I think Malcolm Koontz is better. The Raiders this offseason signed Jordan Willis. I think Malcolm Koontz is better. The Raiders also have a UDFA and Adam Plant Jr. who they love. I actually think Adam Plant Jr. might be better. And if Koontz was able to play linebacker, he could probably find a spot on this roster. It has been reported that Koontz apparently has grown two inches this offseason and is up about 10 pounds. I can't confirm nor deny that those allegations, or I don't even know if you call them allegations, are true. But I know this. Malcolm Koontz is a hell of a player, and unfortunately for him, I just said that I would keep him over a lot of other players. It's not my call. He's not a McDaniels, and he's not a Ziegler guy. If he got a fair opportunity in the NFL, I think he'd be able to succeed. This is the player that had to deal with the Gus Bradley defense. He had to battle a Patrick Graham defense. He's had to learn a lot of new regimes. And because of that, 
he's probably going to be on his way out. But if the Raiders can trade him and at least get a conditional seventh-round pick, I think that they would do it. And when I say conditional seventh-round pick, that is literally just the Raiders waving the white flag, saying, hey, we're going to cut him. But if you're willing to offer me literally anything, I'll take it. And if the Raiders can literally get anything for him, I do think that they end up taking it. Coming up next here, find out which cornerback I believe is the most likely to get traded here on the Raiders report. But I wouldn't be able to make today's show, and I don't even know, can you guys tell? I got my Kanzuri's on right now. Shout out to them for sponsoring the Raiders report. If you're looking for some height-boosting shoes, I want you to listen up because I got a height hack right now that I think all of y'all should listen to. So the Raiders report is sponsored by Kanzuri. Fellas, have you ever wished you were a little bit taller? If I just described you, then you need to listen up because I got you covered with Kanzuri. Kanzuri makes shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, girls get heels. Why can't men get a boost in confidence too? Kanzuri shoes are not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are integrated into the shoes, making it the ultimate height hack. For a limited time only, our listeners get an extra 15% off your order at Kanzuri.com slash chat. The site is already 30% off, and with our link, you get an extra 15%. That's 45% off your entire order. Support the Raiders Report and check them out at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I dot com slash chat. Life short, but hey, you don't got to be. It's time to level up the playing field, fellas. Kanzuri is an absolute game changer when it comes to your dating life. Now, I, I, I will 100% admit this. My fiance now, Alex, she's a shorty. She's like 5'3", and that's pretty forgiving, right? I'm 5'10". I used to have my old ex-girlfriend, and she was like 5'9", 5'8". When she would wear heels, I, I don't know, I was shorter, and I didn't like it. This is kind of like my heel version of that. So if you want to be able to level up the playing field, if your wife, fiance, is the same height as you, and when she wears heels, you know, you might feel a little bit different. These shoes are going to help you bring out some of that confidence. And at the end of the day, man, that's what I try to do here. Find awesome products for all y'all. And if that describes you, go to Kanzuri.com slash chat. Somebody who could probably use some Kanzuri's, guess what? It's Amik Robertson standing in at 5'8". He was selected in the fourth round of the 2020 NFL Draft. And realistically, man, like he's the only guy left of that draft. Robertson isn't a McDaniels or a Ziegler guy. However, the early reports are at a training camp that he's been working with the first team. And I wonder if it's the Lester Cotton treatment. And the reason why I say that is because Cotton was put as the starting right guard for most of the offseason and then didn't end up making the 53-man roster. If the Raiders were to trade Robertson, they would save $1.1 million. But the problem with Amik is not because that he's not a good player. It's because there's a lot of competition right now in this Raiders cornerback room. Like, if they only keep six corners, I don't know how Amik makes it. Duke Shelley's going to make it. Nate Hobbs is going to make it. Marcus Peters is going to make it. Brandon Faison's a lock. Ja'Korian Bennett's a lock. And then after that, there are some unknowns. Do they keep Tyler Hall? Maybe. Do they keep David Long Jr.? Maybe. Do they keep Sam Webb? Maybe. Do they keep Amik? Like, there's a lot of really good competition, and there's a lot of good depth. I would say the only way that Robertson does make this roster is if the Silver and Black decide to keep seven, we'll call them defensive back corners, on their roster. He's a dog, he's a hell of a player, and he's working in the slot. I think because he's smart and he realizes, even though he's a good player, he's too small to play on the outside. So him playing in the slot gives him the best opportunity to make this team. Let's go now to the overall trade compensation that I think that the Raiders would look for. If a team would be willing to offer a seventh round pick, I think the Raiders would take it. And a lot of times when I do these shows, people are like, oh man, that's way too low. It's way too low. NFL teams at this point of the offseason understand that if there's a team that's probably going to move on from a guy, you're not going to get a lot for him. Look at a lot of the trades that usually happen this time of the year. You don't get a lot for him. So Amik, seventh round pick in 2024. Let's go to another Raiders trade candidate here. It's Brandon Parker, who missed the entire 2022 season with a tricep injury. The reason why he's on this list is because of versatility. And there's going to be NFL teams out there that look for 
the ability and a tackle to play left and right. If you trade Parker, you save $1.15 million, and you're only going to eat 100000 The Raiders have a lot, and I mean a lot of depth, at the offensive tackle, at the offensive line position. They like Thayer Munford. He will make the roster. The Raiders traded for Justin Huron. Even though I'm not a big fan of Parker, I would rather have Parker than Huron if I'm being 100% honest with you. The Raiders like Justin Murray. He's got versatility on top of that. So if there is a team out there that's willing to give up a little bit of draft capital, let's say a seventh round pick for Parker, who was not a part of the McDaniels or Ziegler regime, then that's where this possibility comes into play. Do I think Brandon Parker is better than Justin Huron? Yes. But if I can get a seventh round pick in 2024 for, for Brandon Parker, then I'd rather have Justin Huron. And I think that's where the Raiders are going to kind of lean here. We got more Raiders trade candidates coming up here in just a second. But remember, our live shows are insane. And I know that. And I know people sometimes always apologize for not being able to send in Super Chats, which breaks my heart because that's not why I do this show. I do this show for the nation. And if you appreciate the content, the free content that we put out on a daily basis, all I ask is for you to do these three things. Like the video every time I drop a video. And I want you to put one comment, whether it's I love the Raiders, and I want you to share your thoughts because I do this show to see what you guys have to say about this team. I want to be able to give you a voice. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that sub button. And if you are subscribed, send this show to some Raider fans out there and say, hey, you got to check out this guy. I think he's got some good content. Let's go to the next Raiders trade candidate here, and I'm going to be your 100% real. I hate the fact that he's on this show. But Mitch, why did you add him on the show? Because I don't do this based on emotion. I do it based on what I think that the Raiders could potentially do. Merrick was a second-round pick in 2021. He's got a cap hit of $2.2 million this season. And trading him, you save $1.4, and you eat seven hundred and seventy-five. Right? Like I want to give Merrick another opportunity because Merrick, to me, has had to learn two different defenses in two different years, and now you're in year three. I want to see what he looks like in his second year in Patrick Graham's system. I am a fan of Merrick, and I've been a fan of him since he's come out of TCU. However, the Raiders drafted Chris Smith. The Raiders really like Chris Smith. And if they also want to pair another free safety out there, then would it surprise anybody that they're going to roll with one of their guys over somebody that they did not draft? Like, the biggest reason Merrick is on this show is because I know they like Isaiah Polomeo. I know they like Roderick Teamer from a special team standpoint. They signed Jaquan Johnson this offseason. They drafted Chris Smith in the fifth round at 170. But Merrick is more talented than all of those guys. However, Chris Smith, maybe he's a better leader. I don't have the answer to that. What I do know, though, is last season, Merrick struggled. And he really struggled, especially in his coverage ability. When you look at his numbers from his rookie season to his sophomore season, the numbers speak for themselves, right? Like, I want a free safety that can cover. I'm not, I don't give a shit all that much about run. I don't care all that much how well you can rush the passer. If you're going to be a free safety that makes the big dollars in this league, a free safety that a lot of people thought could go in the first round, I had him as a first round grade. You can't have a quarterback rating against you at 129.7. You can't have a complete percentage that high. If he can go back to playing the way that he did as a rookie, and the Gus Bradley system is a lot more easy to understand and react to, which is why I believe that he had the success that he had, and I do think that he's going to have a much better season this year. The only reason why he's on the show is because I could see McDaniels and Ziegler doing it just simply because he's not one of their guys. So the trade value that I could see the Raiders looking at is a fifth-round pick in 2024. I'm looking at all y'all right now on this camera, and I'm telling you, I would not trade Merrick. I do not want to trade Merrick, but I do think that I can make enough reasons why Merrick deserves to be a Raiders trade candidate. For those that do not know, Jeremy Chuggs is on vacation. And if you get time in the, today, tomorrow, in the week, and if there's a random thought that pops into your head, Chuggs does a lot of amazing work on this show. And I get the fact that the Raiders report, you guys see me all the time. But there's a reason why all these graphics are moving. And a lot of the times it's because of Chugs. So if you could, tweet at Jeremy, at Jeremy Chugs, and all I want you to say is enjoy your vacation. Or I don't, say whatever the hell you want to him. He would appreciate it. It would put a smile on his face, and I would definitely appreciate it too because at the end of the day, we are family. Let's go to another Raiders trade candidate here. It's Andre James. 
at center. And I've been talking about potentially trading James for a very long time. And if you would have told me five, six months ago, what's the probability that James gets traded? Well, I would have said like 45, 50%. Now I'm probably a little bit more around 10% because the coaching staff likes his ability, but they also like continuity and chemistry on that offensive line. And the only reason why he's really on here is not because he hasn't played well. He has gotten better and better and better. He's not a McDaniels and Ziegler guy, but it's the money that you can save at 6.5 mil, and you only eat 480K. When the Raiders drafted Dylan Parham, he was actually a center at the Senior Bowl. And Parham has the ability to play center. And funny enough, I'm recording this video on Friday. You know, James talked about how much stronger Parham looks and how much he added more weight. Carmen Brasillo, throughout the history that he's been an offensive line coach, likes heavier centers. And if Parham has put on that weight and they know that he has the ability to play center, well, you could kick Greg Van Rowen into left guard. You could put and retain Moody at right guard. The Raiders have enough offensive line flexibility and ability to move around the center position. So even though James last season played pretty well, and he's a better run blocker than he is a pass blocker, that's just a cold, hard fact. But the only reason he's on this show is because that $6.5 million that you can save and because of Dylan Parham. Those are the two biggest reasons. So how about this? I got a question for you because I am curious to see where Raider Nation falls exactly on this one. You be Dave Ziegler. Let's say you trade right now Andre James and that $6.5 million is for Jacobs. Would you trade Andre James right now to make Josh Jacobs happy? So essentially I'm saying you're going to put Dylan Parham at center, you're going to trade Andre James away, and that money is going to go towards Jacobs to make sure that he's the running back. Would you do it? Give me a yes or give me a no. I got another trade Canada coming up right now, and it's Hunter Renfro. And there's been a report that teams are going to continue to keep their eyes on a potential Renfro trade. This report has been circulating since March. I mean, it's just the way that it is. And right now, if you were to trade away Renfro, you save 11.3 mil. And there's a lot of people out there right now like, holy shit, 11.3 mil for, I don't know, your fifth option in your offense. Do I think Hunter's going to be better this upcoming season? Yes. Do I think that the Raiders hired Danny Amendola to help out Renfro be better this upcoming year? Yes, I do. Do I think that the Raiders' offense will be better with Renfro at slot? Yes, I do. But this is more of a construction of overall roster than anything else. Devontae Adams is the best receiver in the NFL. Jacoby Myers is a solid wide receiver too. Right now, the Raiders have a top five wide receiver room, but they did draft Trey Tucker. They have DeAndre Carter. This team has some talent overall. Last season, with Josh McDaniels, Renfro had only 36 grabs for 330 yards and two touchdowns. He had two concussions. He had some turnover problems. When he was during or when he was doing his press conference on Friday, he talked about that he wanted to show the Raiders and McDaniels, the coaching staff, that he can be better. I do think that he can be better, but could I allocate that money in a better way? Yes, I absolutely could. I would have traded Renfro a long time ago. It's not because he's not a good player. It's because I would have rather invested that $11.3 million that I could save with him and put it on the defensive side of the football. If the Raiders were to trade away Renfro, I'd say right now you're looking to probably get a fifth rounder for him in 2024. Is Renfro worth more? Yes. But if you're an organization, you're like, well, I draft this guy in the sixth round. Think about like buying a car, right? Buying a car, using for four years, and now you're able to ship it off the lot and get more than what you paid for it. I think that's what you'd kind of look for here with Renfro. The final player is not somebody that I think is a trade candidate, but a player that, my God, I just got to talk about. It's Devontae Adams. There's rumors out there that Tay wants to be traded to Green Bay, and it's from Fox Sports. It's from Tony Pauline. It's from MLF Football, from NFL Rooms, from Wi-Fi Raider, or whatever the hell his name is. Like, None of those people are credible sources, and none of those people you should watch on a daily basis. The people that continue to throw out the idea that Devontae wants to be traded are people who are not close to Devontae Adams, and there are people who are, are too lazy to actually look at the numbers and see that a trade with Devontae, it simply doesn't make any financial sense. If the Raiders were to trade away Adams, you're throwing away $24.7 million, right? 
And according to Spotrack, Devontae Adams' contract has already been fully guaranteed. That goes all the way back to March 17th. So I'm telling you all right now, Devontae Adams will not get traded, is not getting traded. And if you see anybody pushing the Devontae Adams trade narrative, all I hope that you do is you show them this video, show them a screenshot because I am sick and tired of thinking and people talking about Devontae getting traded. It's not going to happen. So here's the part of the show where I want you guys to critique me a little bit. Who do I leave off my list of Raiders trade candidates? There's always names. This has got a, we got a full roster, over 90 names. Who do I leave off my list of players that the Raiders could potentially trade away before the regular season starts?